we know fundamental theorem of calculus from our calculus course and its usefulness and uh, its importance in our calculation now we are going to see uh, the fundamental theorem uh, for the contour integrals okay so now let's begin with our discussion now the point is uh, whenever we talk about the integration of a complex valued function then there is always a doubt that under what conditions this integration is possible now uh, we know that uh, in complex valued case we have this uh, beautiful result of cauchy gorsa theorem and uh, as its consequence uh, we can assure uh, that if f is analytic uh, under some other conditions then the antiderivative of that function exists now let's see uh, what is precisely the statement of this result now if f is analytic and complex valued function in a simply connected domain d now this uh, complex valued function is written here of course we are talking about complex valued functions uh, but just to uh, remind you uh, the difference between the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, for real valued function and for complex valued function and in fact they are the same results but the conditions are the function is analytic in a simply connected domain d so these are strong conditions on this uh, complex valued function and if we have a contour from a fixed point z0 to an arbitrary point z then we have this result that this contour integral is equal to the contour integral from z0 to z1 okay uh, this is well defined and is analytic function in d such that f prime z is equal to f of z okay so um, as you remember from uh, calculus course that this is exactly uh, the same apart from the conditions imposed on the function and the domain now let's see what will happen in the case of definite integral so in the case of definite integral once again the conditions are the same we have an analytic function and we are in a simply connected domain d and we have uh, two points z0 and z1 now in this case we just replace z with z1 and so we have a definite integral okay so z is not a variable anymore it is a fixed another fixed point in this simply connected domain d so we are uh, integrating uh, we are taking this uh, contour integral from z0 to z1 along this contour c now since uh, all of the conditions of uh, cauchy gorsa theorem are satisfied so we don't need to specify this contour and uh, this consequence or uh, this fundamental theorem of uh, for contour integration says that uh, what is the exact value of this uh, contour okay so before uh, this discussion uh, we just proved that if we have the conditions of cauchy gorsa theorem then uh, it doesn't matter what uh, contour you take from one point z0 to z1 answer is always going to be the same but this result is much more powerful and useful because it actually gives you what is the value of this contour integral so we can evaluate this value by just taking f of z1 minus f of z0 and remember this f of z is the antiderivative of this function f of z now let's see some of the consequences of this theorem now let's evaluate this contour integral dz over z and c is a contour okay so c is a, a contour in d so what is this d so we just take the whole of complex plane minus this negative real axis x is less than or equal to 0 now here d is simply connected okay now uh, let's see why d is simply connected because we have this uh, whole of the complex plane but all of these points are excluded so these points are not included so we can just take any uh, contour and the interior of contour is contained in d so that's why we can easily see that this d is simply connected okay now uh, so uh, the conditions of uh, this uh, definite integral uh, this theorem that we have just seen are satisfied now we also know that if we take f of z to be equal to this principal logarithm of z 
then f prime of z is equal to 1 over z. Since uh, this uh, 1 over z is analytic at each and every point apart from the origin and uh, we have all already excluded this origin from the domain. So, we can say that this 1 over z is analytic. So, another uh, condition of uh, the, uh, the theorem is satisfied. Okay. So, uh, we, can, we can say that this uh, contour dz over z along this contour c is going to be equal to log of z1 minus log of z0. So, it is the upper limit minus the lower limit because this is equal to z0 to z1 dz over z. Okay, and uh, z0 or z1 are any two points in this domain. Okay, so let's say this is z0 and let's say this is z1. Okay, so it is just uh, just any two points in this uh, domain D and this contour C is any contour. Uh, so according to uh, the fundamental theorem of uh, contour integration, this is equal to log of z1 minus log of z0. Okay. So, uh, we can of course uh, uh, calculate the values of uh, log of z0 and log of z1 if we have uh, the particular values of z0 and z1. So, uh, the point is uh, over here this function log z is not analytic along uh, this uh, branch cut of this function which is the negative real axis. Of course, uh, we can take uh, uh, the branch cut to be uh, any ray, but uh, in this case we can uh, we, we say that this is uh, the branch cut of this principal uh, logarithm. Okay, so of course uh, if we take uh, log and uh, we uh, vary uh, this branch cut, then we can take it to be any other ray. But this is the principal logarithm, and this is the branch cut of this function. Okay, so we excluded this thing, and that's why uh, we can write f prime z is equal to 1 over z because in this domain d uh, the derivative of this uh, function which is the principal logarithm is possible. So, that is uh, an important thing to note. Now, let us see what will happen if that is not the case. Now, let us evaluate this contour integral d z over z and c is given by this parameterization which is in fact a circle. Now, in this case, uh, if we if we say that uh, the antiderivative of this 1 over z is log z, uh, then we cannot for example, uh, f of z is equal to log z, then we cannot say that f prime z is equal to 1 over z, okay? because uh, uh, this on this contour uh, we cannot avoid any ray. Okay? So, we cannot take any ray to be the branch cut of this function. So, that is not the case. Okay? So, we need to avoid this case. Okay? So, let us see what will happen. So, the point is in this case the contour is a circle. Okay? So, it is this circle. So, what we do is we divide this circle into two parts. Okay? So, the first part is let us call it C 1. Okay? So, this is the first part. This is C 1 and the second part is taken to be c2 so this is c2 okay and uh, what do we do uh, instead of uh, evaluating along c then we evaluate this contour integral along c1 and along c2 and of course at the end we can just add the answers because uh, c is equal to c1 plus c2 so this implies that this contour integral dz over z is going to be equal to the contour integrals along this c1 and the contour integrals along this c2. Okay. Now, if we consider the case of c1, okay. now in this case we can take d to be once again complex plane minus the negative uh, real axis. Okay, so where x is less than or equal to zero. Okay, now in this case we can easily uh, say that uh, this capital F of z is equal to the principal logarithm of z. 
okay which is uh, basically equal to okay so is equal to the natural logarithm of the modulus of z plus iota uh, the principal argument or z and of course this principal argument of z lies between pi and minus pi and of course minus pi is not included from this side so basically uh, uh, if we take this uh, equality so instead of uh, uh, taking uh, the equality we take this inequality then this function is differentiable because uh, the negative axis is the only set of points where this function is not differentiable so if we exclude this thing okay so on this domain d uh, this negative uh, real axis is not included so on this domain we can say that f prime z is equal to 1 over z okay so uh, so then according to this fundamental theorem implies that this uh, dz over z is equal to log of the initial point so the initial point is minus iota and the final point is iota okay so log of the the final point so this is the upper limit minus the principal log of the lower limit okay so that's the answer and uh, we can uh, simplify the answer and this is going to be equal to pi iota now moving on to the contour c2 now we want to evaluate this dz over z in case of c2 uh, now let's see what will happen in this case so in this case uh, we we want to take log z uh, with the branch cut to be let's say positive x axis okay so we we just take that this is going to be equal to natural log of the modulus of z plus iota theta and we take theta to be uh, less than 2 pi and greater than 0 okay so basically uh, we are avoiding this uh, uh, positive real axis and in fact we are taking this to be the branch cut and uh, hence in this case uh, we can say that uh, the derivative of this log z okay so if this is f of z then the derivative of f of z is equal to 1 over z but in this domain d so we can uh, so for example take this d to be equal to c minus uh, the positive values of this uh, real axis so x is greater than or equal to 0 so in this case d of course is simply connected 1 over z is analytic in this uh, domain d and uh, hence we can use this fundamental theorem and uh, we have this function capital F of z such that uh, f prime z is equal to 1 over z and since we have uh, uh, taken the branch cut to be the positive side of this real axis th so that's why this uh, function has derivative and uh, it is equal to 1 over z so all of the conditions are satisfied and in this case we can say that this dz over z is going to be equal to uh, log of minus iota because the uh, in this case we are starting from uh, iota and we are ending at minus iota okay so this is dz over z so what is going to be the upper limit minus iota minus log of the lower limit which is iota and uh, using this definition we can easily write it down as so log of uh, uh, 1 is 0 natural log of 1 uh, so 1 is basically the modulus of minus iota and modulus of iota is also 1 so natural log of uh, this one is going to be zero so we are just going to write down its argument so iota 3 pi by 2 minus iota pi by 2 which is going to be equal to pi iota so the value of contour integral along this contour c1 is also pi iota and the value of contour along this contour c2 is also pi iota so what is going to be the value dz over z which is going to be dz by z along c1 plus this contour integral along c2 and in both cases we have this answer pi iota so at the end we have this answer 2 pi iota okay so that's uh, how we use this fundamental theorem to evaluate these contour integrals so this is the end of our discussion on this fundamental theorem of contour integration and uh, of course it has many other uh, important and powerful consequences as well and uh, there are many examples 
uh, in which we can simplify our calculations by using fundamental theorem of calculus but uh, important thing to note it just like in calculus there are conditions under which we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus so in this case as well we have some conditions under which this holds so you need to take care of those conditions as well